we have a storm in the Gulf. Crazy Eddie is in the house. What do you, what do you see over there in the Gulf? Well, it's looking like a monster, bro. I'm Laura. telling you, that thing is giant. Oh. Laura. We're, we're, we're going to have this a little a big special girl. edition of the Blue Collar Boardroom, guys. Welcome. This is uh, going to be something that we talk about very much over the next maybe a uh, couple of weeks because it's the height of hurricane season. We had two storms in the Gulf, and one is about to make landfall. And man, this reminds us, almost three years after Hurricane Irma, about a massive push, a life-changing opportunity. And with the whole world suspended looking at this hurricane, everybody wants to know, how do you go after the biggest deals in the market? How do you capitalize off of one of these disasters? What's the secret to cash flowing through one of these situations? How do you market? How do you operate? And I've got the master of disaster. I've got Mr. Uh, Stop Bitch and Start Doing. And this is what you came here for. You came hey, what's up, Lee? I'm so excited to see this. I've never actually personally worked a hurricane, just hailstorms, working with some of the best people. I'm excited to hear what Mr. Kelly has to say and how he plans on attacking this. Honestly, one of the things you don't want to do is jinx it, but I don't think looking at that picture, there's even the slightest chance of this not making landfall in the United States. It's going to hit a couple markets that definitely have a potential. The density of population is pretty high. Oh, there we are. Yep. It's a large loss prospect. We can't tell you where that's at, but we can tell you that we are doing what you should be doing before the storm. We are flying this area. You know, just using Google, Google satellite imagery, we know that this storm is coming up right over here. And it's probably gonna gonna hit mostly around this Port Arthur and Orange area, but we all know that the most impactful winds are on the east side of the storm. And in Category Four, even a few miles outside this Lake Charles area, is a more established neighborhood, more established community. Now, in this area, you may know this is a low income area. You know, average income twenty two thousand dollars per person. Dave, what do you, what do you know about working storms in some of these lower income markets? I mean, what you got to do when you do get to a, uh, a market like that is you got to get the biggest bang for your effort, right? Well, I'll tell you what we did. In St. Louis, we went after the Dragon. And I want to tell you a Dragon of town here, the Golden Nugget Lake, Lake Casino. I was thinking the book by Tillman Furtada, Shut Up and Listen. It taught me a lot this year, but he's the owner of the Golden Nugget Casinos. He's the owner of the Houston Rockets. He's the owner of Landry's. He's having a tough time because of this coronavirus, okay? So you know what he's going to be pretty up, uh, upset about? Yes, his his hurricane damaging the crap out of this Golden Nugget Casino, and all this is his property. But you know what? He's going to need somebody to help him out. Luckily for us, we're associated with Fair Chance Claims. We're associated with some large loss attorneys. We're disaster consultants ourselves. What if we could get in here and make a deal? It's always been a, like a, a role model of mine, or a, a mental. Like I would have Tillman Furtado sitting there answering questions on this on this podcast. What if we could sell him a roof? Well, the first thing you got to remember is in a hurricane. The first thing we can sell and we're prepared for is to stop further damage, right? And that, that's how we can get our foot in the door. Someone that's a hurricane chasing expert told me this one time. He said, "Lee, whenever you show up to sell." Uh, claim right after a hurricane it's like you walking up on somebody who's been shot on the side of the road and that's a pretty grotesque uh, analogy but when someone's shot on the side of the road and their roof is blown off or you know they have uh, debris everywhere water that's tearing up their property you know what you don't want to do you don't want to go in there acting like the salesman you don't want to go in there what you want to do Stop the bleeding. You just stop the bleeding. How do we stop the bleeding? Well, we're prepared here. I mean, we've had a couple of years here in Florida. We're loaded up with the materials, the manpower, and the equipment that these people are going to need right away, directly after the storm, within days. We also have connections. Uh, connections through people that are going to refer us jobs. We have our strategic response network, thousands of restoration and remediation contractors that want to give us roof jobs. And in exchange, we have pre-arrangements that we will get them all this like mitigation work and dry out work. And that means that we don't have to carry around all the overhead equipment and we can actually make a percentage off of just getting our guys in there. And we can still be the general contractor controlling the whole deal. So when we stop the bleeding, we wanna talk about shrink wrap. We wanna talk about getting the water, getting the damaged property out of the building and moving quick with manpower. You know, of course we have the manpower, we have the logistics, but- We it, have the, the certification for a material that will have a 
guarantee for one year. And that's also got some insurance companies ringing our bell yeah, prior gonna, to the storm hit us up. Uh, to give us, you know, potentially, you know, like say a Holiday Inn Express here. Once, once the roof's been blown off and, and we have a major leak and you have four stories of damage, you know, this could cost the uh, insurance company millions of dollars if they don't get a competent crew over there to stop the bleeding. So they look for us as a certified installer of the shrink wrap with more than, how many square feet we got a shrink wrap? We got about 3,500 square feet. No, 35,000 35, 35, square, square feet. feet. And so we can already packed and with the equipment to put it on, including the qualified people. So we could it. shrink wrap a few of these Walmarts right here on demand if we had to. And we, of course, um, are going to go after the biggest jobs in the market. But even a small project like this, um, as a general contractor, if this roof's blown off, it's a complete replacement. Even on a building like that, you could be looking at a million dollar plus loss. And so it doesn't take that many projects. See, what we've learned over the years is with less men going after a targeted focus. Now, after a hurricane, telephones don't work. Sometimes you can't send, obviously, direct mail. Uh, Facebook marketing, whenever cell phone service is down, is not really relevant. So, David, how do you go get business? Well, you have to go out there and hit the streets. That's how you got to do it. Uh, as well, you will have connections and people seeking you out right away after a hurricane. People will find you right away. They don't, they're not sure what to do, so they're going to ask you. That's a nice looking one right, All right there. So here we are. We're going to do a little uh, preliminary analysis on a property. We'll black this out so you don't even see what we're doing over here. But let's uh, let's go over here and see if we can look them up on, on Real Enemy. And I hope I can get the login. But what we want to do here is we want to find out Look, the key in commercial sales is the man that's trying to get the foot in the door must have more information. And usually that means you know the owner, you know the property manager, you know when the property was bought and sold, what the property was bought for. And a lot of times you know if there's insurance. So I'll go in here and I'll actually look at this property right here. I'll get the address. Okay, we're going to go right here. Ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. What are we on right here? What tool is this? Uh, this is called Reonomy. If you want to, you're you can. I give all of the people. Reonomy gives my people a special discount. If you go to reonomy.com forward slash Lee, it's the proprietary. Uh, I think it's the best information, and it works the best on a mobile phone. I've used a lot of different softwares, but this one in particular has been the go-to for me. So you can just fly over, kind of hover over the properties that you're looking at and then get the information on the properties or what are, what are we looking at right here? Well, what we're looking at here is a, a flat roof that's an old roof that this guy would be really this real a, happy if you this go, guy's a low income oh, man this this has got insurance the insurance may not be that great, but this is a property owner right now that is going to be concerned about his property. He may have worked with other uh, uh, people in the past, but you know, one of the things that I would like to do is demonstrate that you can create a relationship prior to the storm, even with these customers. And as a disaster consultant, typically what I want to do is I want to ask them if they're prepared, what their game plan is, you know, and if they have the manpower to accommodate after the storm. And what's going to happen is, is if they're looking for someone to do mitigation work for roof repair work, I can pre-sell the shrink wrap. Dave, what do you think, man? Mm, that looks like a good single home property. Let's look, I would look a little more for something different. We also, when we, we won't know till, till it happens. It's still gonna hit. We don't know if it's gonna be going left or right, but we do, we are ready to get there. I don't like to pre-think about it too much. It is right that you need to start pre-setting this into people's minds. So that's a nice place. It's an apartment building. What's that one owned by? That's owned by David Alexander. We're going to follow up on some of these leads. What we need to do is we need to make a cold call list, guys. So, you know, everybody gets all pumped up and want to sell jobs. Okay, great. So one of the biggest things in a hurricane is you get all excited. You start your brain's all mumbling around. You don't even have an idea to get focused. What we want to be doing, Dave, is we want to be flying through these territories and we want to be – uh, making a Laura commercial prospecting list. And this is going to help us do, this is going to help us more than anything else.
we are just going to label all these all these right here so that's the first one on the on the laura commercial let's just keep zooming around here looking for commercial prospects but see looky there there's a house neighborhood full of 50 square roofs mm -hmm. um looks like a workable looks looks like a workable kind of place looks that's like for sure looks like a workable kind of place doesn't it? i'm going to sell you tell you something that's going to be really nice it's going to be in a market that doesn't have gates so i can't wait for that like I've, we've been dealing with that for three years here and the south southwest florida what tips would you give about a market without any gates what are you going to do how are you going to attack the subdivision well basically you got to get the entryway and the cul-de-sac and then start connecting the points uh generally when i get to a market i try and contact as many people as possible put their data in our crm and then I always make an offer so that those people have a folder with a sell sheet and a list of items. And as you pass those out, those will turn into jobs and then you do perfect work and you win the neighborhood that way. Look at these deals in Texas, bro. There's some good deals yeah. over here in this, this town of Orange. Look right here. What about the different types of commercial owners, Lee? I mean. So there's there's actually corporations that own these people, different entities that own commercial buildings. What about the mom and pop shop? Yeah. Like who who who's the target people here? Well, there's a good single problem. owner yeah. occupancy. That's the like a, where there's an owner. Would you say so, Lee? You're, yeah, my favorite is individually owner. Individually, individual owned yeah. properties. Well, that's enough about chasing down these commercial deals. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Dave, I want to kind of talk about how we got to know each other and our relationship. You've helped me build a lot of roofs. How many roofs we built together? Many, many thousands, brother. Many, many thousands. I think it was about eight years ago, I was seeking out a software, mm -hmm. and I ran into you at the IRE Roofing yeah. Convention in Orlando, Florida. And I uh, tell them how long I've been at these conventions offering services. Well, since then, at least I've seen what you go was every that? time. That was in, I think it was 2011 or 2012. Right. It was right? a year. Yeah, it was 2011. 2011. And it was in Orlando. And I walked in. I actually was seeking out software. So I made a pre plan like you were. And I pinned the places I wanted to go. At the time, you were giving away a Harley. Mm, yeah. yeah, and I walked by your booth, and they you had a beautiful uh, a booth, and then a, a demonstration area. And the second you started the demo, boy, it snapped because that was the same software I would have said, and that we saw eye to eye from there. I think I interrupted you about a thousand times and got it going, and we hit it off since then. After that, I sh shortly just jumped on board. So. Yeah, and uh, what's cool is that. You know, we've grown a lot together. You know, at mm -hmm. that, that time period, you know, I had some of my friends working with me. It was me and Jared Janicek and some of his buddies. Mm -hmm. And we were in a rebuilding phase. And we went to Nashville with a small group. It was like, you know, four or five of us. And it was that's how it was in the good old days. Is we'd right. go to the storms with a small group. We'd work and build a bigger group. But we'd always, you know, kind of, you don't realize, you think I've always had this huge group of people or a huge sales team. And, you know, it didn't used to be that way. I mean, well, we would just go and get started. Right. You know, we would just go and get started. That's kind of how that fell in. I actually got to Nashville before you guys almost. Mm. I think you dropped in for a day, then left, and I stayed there a bit. Landed a couple nice jobs. And well, we landed a couple of wood shake big roofs in a yeah. good neighborhood, and then we made a neighborhood just work that didn't have all that much After damage. That, that's for sure. Um, but we got a neighborhood captain to refer us around, and then me and David built a book of business in St. Louis, and that's where we really got to know each other. And mm -hmm. you know, we went up against some tough competition in that market, and what we learned was that you know, if you could get a team to follow protocol, that you could get new guys up to speed quickly on pre-capping their own jobs, doing their own work orders, doing their own estimates. And we took Donnie Black that year from, you know, being- Zero to hero, bro. Yeah, he was zero to hero. This guy is a great goot, right? He went from being a, a $15 an hour chef right. to being a $15,000 a week uh, in his pocket producer. And, right. and his first year made over $100,000 and it was, you know, a long-term career where I think five years he worked. We, we, we did a lot of roofs he, together. 
I mean, That's he right. he he was. Uh, you know, a part of the good old crew, and, and in that year in 2012, I can remember going up against my uncle's company. Remember when they were trying to walk all our signs? Tell them about mm-hmm. a good old-fashioned Hatfield and McCoy, like the old hate family rivalry there in St. Louis. Remember that? Well, I, I, I do. And I they had a larger team. Who's they? That was... RSA. They partnered R-R-S-A. with the local company, and that was my Called, uncle's company. Called, uh, geez, what was the name? It was Lee, Lee. Allen. No, yeah, Allen, Lee Allen Roofing. Roofing. Lee Allen Roofing. Uh, they w- were right head to head in the same area, and there was one golden nugget in probably the best neighborhood, Colleyville, yeah, which you actually landed. It was the largest roof there. It was a. It was Mr. Schwartz's job. Oh yeah. Right? Then we recruited him. Yep. And they were going right in behind us, trying to get us pried out of where we had already bored our hole. By just saying, hey, these guys aren't local, we are. And, you know, we used to partner with local companies too. But, you know, we in in that market, you know, just were basically our company. We told them we're roofing professionals, this is who we are. And these other company would come behind and say these guys weren't local. What was was the first hurricane you guys worked together? First hurricane we worked together was Hurricane Matthew. Matthew. And that was on the East Coast. And that was uh, about four years years ago. And a lot's changed in four years. For one, Florida has changed the whole dynamic of how me and David look at insurance. Uh, it has changed the average transaction value just tremendously. Um, we basically have built more roofs in Florida than we have almost in our entire career. Other places dollar amount wise, which yeah. is like basically we've done as much work in the last four years as we had the previous 10. I mean, for me, the, the, it, it, there, was a t- there was a time and w- I'm always willing to go back to that time, but there was a time when if you had a $20,000 claim, it was considered a tremendous large claim. Mm-hmm. Whereas now this is, we're get, getting anywhere from 60 plus and a hundred plus thousand dollars per claim. How is Our, this, how, how is this new, this new storm that's coming in? How is it going to be different from, well, it's going to be a cheaper market. And if you go after shingle asphalt jobs, you're not going to be able to make $60,000 a job. The only way you're going to be able to make, those kind of averages is if you mix in commercial and you find um, the high end neighborhoods and you know there there may be some historic areas where there's wood shake slate uh, historic tile roofs. This is not a big tile community, so the way you're going to do it's going to be commercial roofs. So whether it's the apartment complexes that we get through um, real estate investment groups or real estate investors or it's individually owned big commercial properties or it's a property management company that gets us in there. We're going into the backwoods and chances are these individually owned units, there's going to be a uh, property owners from Houston that own property owner property in Lake Charles. There's going to be, a, there's going to be a weird mix. Um, but with Beaumont, orange, um, Lake Charles and all these little areas, there's going to be a lot of different areas where we, we can go in there and pick out, you know, w- w- look, it doesn't have to be a huge commercial building for it to be, you know, if the roof gets ripped off, there's tons of mitigation. There's insides that we have to rebuild. I mean, it, it can get really big really quick. So the idea is not to go out there and try and do every job. The idea is to go down there and select the jobs that you want to do and, and build a sales funnel that is targeted, that doesn't get distracted by the things that can kill you from profitability. And that kind of, that's this level five leadership. David and I have been running storms together. It's like going to war. We've been to war a bunch of times together. And that mm-hmm. means that, you know, we know uh, in a situation when we're under the gun, I've been under the gun many different times with pressure from governments. If you come into the storm, uh, Louisiana requires workman's comp insurance. Um, that means that every single person is covered. And, and when you start hiring subcontractors, you don't realize that you're breaking the law. Right. So talk to them about compliance and breaking the law and insurance and people falling and hurting themselves and liability. And sure. David is known as the grim reaper of RCA. It's not these out making people fall off roofs. It's that sometimes people turn into, um, I don't know. You can easily fail in a hurricane. That's the real lesson that you don't, you're not told by the old timers. When they said, oh, I did this hurricane back then, some of them who are about in their 30s and 40s now, they were kind of drifting on someone else's coattail. You get me? The old timers didn't tell you how many people flunked. How many people flunked. A hurricane's an easy place to flunk. That's why you're better off joining our team. Cat 4 Hurricane Report, the lessons nobody will tell you about working a hurricane. 
So the new Facebook title is. So wh- where where are you? What is it that for you, Lee? It's gonna. It could possibly hit Texas if it goes a little left. What's your thoughts on that? Because I know how I feel about Texas. I I like it. Well, there's nothing wrong with Texas, bro. No. I mean, uh, when it comes to Texas, is my hometown. I love Texas. I mean, Texas is cheap. It gets a bad rap, but you know, it's. Dude, there's there's a lot of commercial roofs that are going to be in damage now. Beaumont has been hit by storms before, so it was since 2005. Oh, that's when the last storm was. Yeah, hit. it was 2005, and my my understanding is they're paying 450 to 500 a square there. We know all the crews there. We know how to work. It's got Texas wind, so here we are, guys. Engineer the live thing. with the Facebook crew. We are fixing to. Um, go live to the masses all right so i'm gonna get this thing situated over here so we can get everybody in the shot there we are uh guys we're in the blue collar boardroom there's a hurricane approaching and we want to give you the lessons nobody else will teach you about working one of these hurricanes i'm here with mike stop bitching stop doing it i'm here with david kelly we are shooting an episode in the blue collar boardroom guys um Pop on there and, and, and see if y'all can't share this out because I've got some important info. There's a lot of information that people won't give you about working one of these storms. Uh, this storm is going to do a lot of damage. My hearts and prayers go out to anybody that's going to be affected by this. Um, if you're in the roofing and restoration industry, you know there's some things that we're going to be doing differently this time as far as giving back to the community. I'm excited to be a part of and I'm going to be unleashing this. But what I really want to cover is we're doing a podcast and we're going to be uploading it to YouTube. We're in here shooting the podcast. You're inside the studio. David, tell them about the lessons that the old timers don't tell you about a storm and and what we were just talking about on our podcast episode. I mean, the what they don't tell you, the guys who say, oh, remember that hurricane, remember this, is how many people might have failed at it. Okay. Well, tell them, you're, tell them your story. I mean, I you've mean, had a lot of success. Tell them about how long we worked together. There, we've been together since 2012. I met Lee at the Orlando Roofing Convention. I was seeking out software. I found software and a partner for the last few years or eight years, nine years over this But you went business. off. You, you want to st- start the storm yourself here. I've, I've come and gone always looking for greener pastures. Right. right? Uh, A hurricane would always be something that I didn't work before Matthew, right? Mm -hmm. That's the one? Four years ago. Four years ago that hit the East Coast around the Daytona area. And, you know, the lesson I learned in it is you need a certain amount of strength to have a success in a hurricane. You need to be first in and last out. To do that, you have to be prepared either working with someone who has the experience and the protocol and systems and the opportunity for you to generate income right away. Because I came down with another partner who was successful in different markets and completely flunked at it, right? Right. right. It's, I, have, I have a saying, it's, it's chance favors the prepared mind. Mm-hmm. You understand? We're not only mentally prepared for this over the last... Five years we've been developing our systems protocol and working a market that was hurricane two times in a row. It's also we're physically prepared for this. I mean, physically downstairs, there is trailers packed with what we need, the tools we need, the physical tools we need at that market, as well as physically we have the men beyond our systems and protocol. What's the best so. tips you can give any salespeople that's looking to uh, to help with this hurricane? What, what can you say to them? The, the okay. first thing I gotta say is you, you gotta work with me. That's, that's the bottom line with the salesperson. If you wanna win, you join Team Dave. That's, that's, that's really the best tip. That's number one. If you don't do that, you're already starting like 10 steps back. So if you do that, I'll tell you step two, which is follow, our systems and protocol. We also have the tools. We have Sky Diamonds University. That's part of what you get.